Well, joining us now is Craig Singleton, China expert at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Sir, welcome to the show. Hi, Nima, thanks. So how long has this effort to obtain information on the origins of COVID-19 been going on? Well, preparations for the delegation have been in the works for more than a year. And the delegation's mission is pretty straightforward. Investigate the origins of the virus, but also think through some of the steps that we need to take in the future to prevent these sorts of things from happening again. And yet at every turn, Chinese authorities have sought to undermine this investigation, culminating in these most recent developments. All of this obfuscation is just really ominous because the outgoing U.S. National Security Advisor just commented that U.S. authorities still believe the virus could have escaped from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and to date, China has refused to discuss this institute's role in the pandemic. And why do you think it's taking so long to get a team inside China? So at, there are really both domestic and international considerations at play. Chinese President Xi Jinping is very sensitive to the idea that his government mishandled the pandemic, so much so that it could undermine the Chinese Communist Party's credibility. And internationally, China's refusal to answer questions have, about the outbreak has sort of fueled speculation about what China knew and when. Uh, and so those questions are just going to continue to dog China uh, until such time that the, U the, the U.S. and other countries around the world really know the truth. And in terms of WHO's response to all this secrecy in China, what it, how do you think the WHO handled this? Well, the WHO uh, has been under pretty significant pressure for months now to call out China's lack of transparency. And it's important to note that the WHO's own credibility sort of is in question on account of its initial mishandling of the pandemic uh, and perceptions that the WHO was sort of overly deferential to China. Uh, and so that said, it was very surprising last week to see the WHO publicly call out China um, and its decision to cancel the trip, um, which may have been just enough to convince China to sort of change course. Now, China made similar moves during the SARS outbreak in 2002 in regard to information release. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more on how this was handled as well? Sure. So COVID-19 is really occurring in the shadow of SARS. Uh, and like SARS, the Chinese government's early response to the coronavirus effort was to tightly control information and hampering sort of the containment effort. And so it's widely believed that the SARS epidemic, like COVID-19, uh, could have been contained much sooner had Chinese authorities not deliberately controlled that information. All right, now a WHO team is set to arrive on Thursday. Could this effort be delayed as well? And what should the global response be if that is the case, sir? But it's certainly possible this trip could be delayed again, um, particularly as there is now a COVID outbreak in a major Chinese province where more than 11 million people are currently on lockdown. Uh, governments around the world have been relatively muted uh, in their response to COVID sort of kabuki theater. And I'm not convinced we're going to see a big change in sort of international messaging around this particular trip if it's delayed again. Uh, that said, it's high time for the WHO's principal funders around the world to demand a serious investigation into COVID's origins, as well as to mandate swift changes throughout the organization to address China's attempts to kind of co-opt the WHO. Now, there has been some criticism around the delegation in itself, the one that is charged to investigate the, the coronavirus situation in China. Can you tell us a little bit more on the restrictions and influence that China has on this expert team that is, is expected to arrive on Thursday? So it'll come as no surprise that very little information is known about the delegation. And it's important to note that host governments had no say in whether their own scientists were going to be asked to participate. China has also refused to release any information about the delegation's meeting agenda, and it was China, not the WHO, that was responsible for designing the delegation's planned meetings. So all in all, it's not a very comforting picture. All right, sir, we've got about a minute left, but how should the world respond to China's lack of cooperation during this global fight against this virus? And more particularly, how should Canada respond? You know, the saying goes that sunlight's the best disinfectant, and that motto sort of applies to the current situation. Understandably, countries are very focused on their efforts to inoculate their populations, but before the world can really move forward, it's really important that we look backwards. So countries like Canada, which are WHO funders, should be pushing for that independent, fast-tracked investigation into the, or the organization's handling of the pandemic, mm -hmm. with a particular emphasis on understanding the interactions between the WHO and the Chinese government early on in the pandemic.